And welcome to episode eight of How to Be Unscammable. This series is designed to help older adults learn how to secure their digital lives. And in this episode, we make sure your devices are unscammable. Hi there, it's Linda Fawkes. I'm the founder of Glue Society. We're a Canadian nonprofit that helps older adults learn to use the technology that's in their lives. Because technology can help us stay connected to the people and things we love but only if we know how to use it. We seem to live our lives today on our devices, especially our mobile devices. Our smartphones are used as cameras all the time, credit cards, maps, and clocks, and flashlights, and we occasionally use them to make the odd phone call. And because we live our lives on our devices, these devices hold a massive amount of information about us that we do not want in the hands of cyber criminals. Securing our devices from threats like malware and viruses is critical. We've talked a lot about that throughout this series. The big stat to remember from episode 5 is that 95% of malware and viruses land on our devices when we click on links or attachments in emails. So to make your life unscammable, you want to make sure you're in the habit of never clicking on links or attachments in emails unless you are 200% certain of the sender, and even then, I would double check. So here are the steps you can take to make sure your devices stay protected. operating system, more commonly called the OS, is the software that makes your devices work. It controls all of the apps and functions of your device. Cyber criminals spend a lot of time trying to find holes in operating systems so they can attack the devices that use that OS. And that's why hardware manufacturers spend so much time finding and fixing those holes. And these fixes come to you in the form of an operating system update. If you take away only one step from this episode, it's this one. Update operating systems on every device you own. This is a digital security tip that almost every digital security experts agree on. OS updates often include important security fixes that help keep your digital life secure. That means when you get that annoying message telling you to update your operating system, don't ignore it. Do it. Even better, turn on automatic updates so you don't have to think too much about this process. Now, I hear from people all the time who say they don't want to update their operating system because they fear the update will change how the device works. And if it's a big OS update, you may see icons in different places or additional features added to your device. But big updates don't happen all the time. It's a safe bet that most operating system updates include important security fixes that make your device safer and barely change how it functions. Think of it this way. We can eventually figure out how to use the new bells and whistles that might come with a big operating system update, but few of us can easily figure out how to deal with a device that's been hacked. The most secure operating system is the newest operating system, and that's why it's critical you download operating system updates when they're available. This step is to check if your device has an operating system update waiting. To do this, navigate to the Settings app and look for the Software Update options. I'll include instructions on how to update operating systems on Apple and Samsung devices in the show notes, and you'll find those linked at the end of the episode or you can search on your device manufacturer's website for instructions. We all need a backup plan for our digital lives. Old hardware can be unpredictable. Hard drives can just stop working, wiping out all the data that's stored on them. Devices can get infected with malware and viruses, or be lost, stolen, or ransomed. That's why we need a backup plan for every device we own. If you're using a computer, your backup plan might include an external hard drive. 
And if you're on a mobile device, it might include a cloud-based service that you can also use on your computer. Most modern devices come with cloud-based backup options ready to use. When you use a cloud-based backup, you're sending data from your device through the internet to be safely stored elsewhere. This could be at Google, Apple, Microsoft, or another cloud service provider. Cloud backups are usually a setting you have to turn on though. So do a search for how to use the cloud backup services that are on your hardware. Now, another reason to have a backup plan is that ransomware attacks are on the rise. Ransomware is a type of malware that can get on a device through phishing emails or through old operating systems. Cyber criminals use this ransomware to lock a device and demand a ransom payment before they will unlock the device. These attacks can happen to anyone. But if you back up your data regularly, a ransomware threat is pretty easy to deal with. You simply wipe your device and restore it from a clean backup. It is all about the backup. And yet another reason to keep your data backed up, especially the data that's on your mobile devices, is that much of our lives today are stored there, including our photos and videos that we love taking. If that data is only on the device you're holding and that device is lost, stolen, or infected with malware, that data could be lost. So this step is to create a backup plan for your devices. If you need help with this, you could reach out to your device manufacturer for guidance on how to best back up your data, or that techie friend that I hope you have in your life could give you a hand with this. To learn more about ransomware, or if you have questions about how to deal with a ransomware attack, this website is the place to go. NoMoreRansom.org helps victims of ransomware retrieve the data without having to pay the cyber criminals. So check out this website if you want to learn more. We all know not to leave our devices unattended, but even if they don't leave our site for too long, it only takes a second for thieves to snatch them. Today, they can be stealing a device more for the information it contains than for the hardware's value. This step is to protect your device with passcodes or pins. And if you have biometric security like fingerprint scanning or facial recognition, you should use that. These features mean that after a short period of time, your device will lock itself, making it basically impossible for someone to break in. If you have any questions about the privacy of biometric security, I urge you to read the information your hardware manufacturer provides on this. If there's one thing you're learning in this series, it's that your data is precious and you need to keep it out of the hands of cyber criminals. Biometric security helps you do that. Device locking and wiping features are available on most modern computers and mobile devices. They help protect your device from thieves and make it easy to track down a lost device. And here are the four main ways you could use this feature. You can see the location of a lost or stolen device on a map with pretty good accuracy. You could tell a device to make a sound. I use this feature to find my iPhone around the house using my Apple Watch all the time. <laughs> you can remotely lock a device. Use this feature when you're not sure if the device is stolen, but it definitely feels lost. You can tell that device to lock itself to ensure that no one else can access the data on it. And if you're sure your device is stolen or gone gone, then you can wipe it completely. This erases all of the data on it and it's a surefire way to ensure no one else gets your personal information. But a remote wipe might not be successful 100% of the time. So it's critical that your devices have a secure passcode or pin protecting them as well. Even if you use biometric security, a passcode or pin is still used to get into the device. So please don't use passcodes or pins that are easy to guess. And if your cellular device has been lost or stolen, it's a good idea to let your mobility provider know. This step is a reminder to learn how to set up the remote lock and wipe features on your device and then learn how to use them. In the show notes, I'll include instructions on how to set up remote locking and wiping on your Apple and Android devices. 
and you can also search for this information on your hardware manufacturer's website. And those are the four steps to keep your devices unscammable. Let's recap each one. Step one, update your operating systems. This is pretty much one of the most important steps in this entire series. Update operating systems on all the devices you own and set those devices to automatically update so you don't have to think too much about this. Step two, back up everything. Backup storage is cheap and you can automate this process. It's important to back up everything, so make a plan to create backups of your computers and mobile devices. This will help protect you from ransomware and from losing important photos and documents. Step three, protect access to your devices. Turn on biometric security features if your device has them and make sure that your passcode and pins are not easily guessable. Step four, set up remote locking and wiping on your devices. It's a smart move and it's pretty easy to do. This ensures that if you lose a device, your data can't get into the hands of cyber criminals. It's also a handy feature if you need to find your device around the house. The world seems to be traveling again, and when we travel, we tend to bring our mobile devices with us, and that means they're going to need to be charged from time to time. I use a portable charger stashed in my bag whenever I travel or I leave the house for a day or two. Often this will give my big iPhone a couple of full charges. You can get portable chargers that will charge your tablets and your computers as well. I tend to buy mine from Amazon, but you can get them pretty much anywhere that sells electronics. If you don't have a portable charger, you may be tempted to plug your devices into the free USB charging stations found at most airport gates, hotels, or other travel-friendly locations. This is a warning to be careful when using those charging stations. You could be the victim of a juice jacking. That's when cyber criminals load malware onto your device while you're charging. I'll include a link to the New York Times story on this in the show notes. So to charge your devices safely when you're away from home, consider bringing a power adapter and a cable and use a wall plug or get a portable charger. They're handy things to have but be careful when using free USB charging stations. You know those little USB drives? They're also called thumb drives. These are popular giveaways at trade shows, conferences, and as promotional gifts. But this tip is a reminder to never plug in a USB or any external device to your own devices unless you own them. Because malware can be distributed through infected USB drives. So the rule is this, I'll say it again, Never to insert a USB device or any removable storage device into your computer or your mobile devices unless you are 200% sure of their origin. Record the make and model of your devices somewhere other than on your devices themselves. If a device goes missing, contact your service provider and let them know. The model information may help place your device on a national blacklist, preventing it from working on most wireless networks. This information will also help you report the theft to local law enforcement. And those are the steps to keep your devices unscammable. The steps in this episode won't take too much time to follow, and they are definitely much faster than all the time it would take to deal with a cyber attack. And since we're talking about devices, this is a reminder to check out Episode 7, for tips on securely recycling your old devices. It's important you do this properly to avoid putting your digital life at risk. Next up, we're going to learn how to surf the web safely and I'll share some tips on how to use public Wi-Fi the right way. And in episode 10, we close this series with a look at how to keep your apps and online accounts unscammable. I'll see you in episode nine.